All right, we are looking at mental health issues, part two, anxiety, depression, and substance use disorder. Here are some terms. You can stop the tape and uh, video and look at those if you so wish. Hopefully you will get a better understanding of each of these. But currently, I am putting this in the context of my own life to help you understand, not because I want to look at me or even want to make this gosh darn video. I currently have an accommodation at my place of work under 504, under the Americans with Disabilities Act, for an anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder. And the goal is to bring understanding to this condition. It's not a poor me video because I've got a good life. However, my life would have been a lot better, a lot less pain for myself and others, had I had an understanding of this condition and had I been able to get a grips of it. Mental health, it is a condition. I like to call it a condition. I don't like to call it an illness. It's a disorder, meaning out of order, anxiety disorder. It is the fight or flight mechanism unchecked, the anxiety disorder, a physiological response to stress, which can incur tenseness. It doesn't mean anxiety, oh, I'm afraid, I'm anxious. Sometimes the result can be anger, the reaction, quick to redline, longer to take down. Now, our emotions are a physiological response or a change in the body that promotes survival behavior. And think about this from an evolutionary perspective. Every emotion leads to or led human beings at one point in their evolution to a behavior that ensured the survival of the species. There are six basic emotions, anger, fear, surprise, sadness, happiness, and disgust. And anxiety disorder is a form of fear. It is a stress response that enabled an organism to respond quickly without thinking. All right? A form, a form of a physical response. The blood was shunted away from the organs. And this is being in a stress mode when something stressful happened. And that's important for survival, but it's not good for our system if we are under that stress mode for too long a time. It's like running an engine full speed all the time. But that stress response kicks in, that fight or flight thing. We are hardwired not to get eaten. This fight or flight, it prepares the organism to fight or to flee, redistributes the blood from the internal organs to the peripheral muscle or from the brain to the peripheral muscle. You see this release of stress hormones, increase in sensory vigilance, startled reflex, and heart fast breathing <laughs> and you can feel yourself when you are under stress this physiological response and again that's good for survival at one point in our species and uh but it is not good for our daily living now homeostasis there's a new word that's the ability of the body or the mind to heal or regulate itself to maintain an internal equilibrium by adjusting the physiological process. A mood dysregulation means that you are unable to regulate your emotions or your emotional response. You get angrier faster and you stay angrier longer. It's a hyper response mode. All right. It is a temporary loss of the ability to self right to yourself uh, psychologically. That's what this home, uh, dis, mood dysregulation is, an inability to regulate your emotions. And I'm going to show you an example. This would be a normal person, the blue line in response. Yes, you feel this emotion, but you come down. You have this homeostasis. You're able to regulate. Someone with an anxiety disorder gets angrier, gets 
more angry and takes a lot longer to come down or if they can come down. This is a response to anxiety. They get more anxious, more angry, more worked up, more whatever it is. At a higher level, they stay that way longer and have a harder time getting back to regulate. Now, anxiety disorder has high rates of comorbidity. This means when there's two or more existing conditions, oftentimes anxiety uh, exists with depression or alcohol abuse or substance abuse. And in my case, it was anxiety or it is anxiety and a major depressive disorder. And there has been chemical abuse or alcohol abuse in the past. And this is very common because you are looking to uh, relieve the condition somehow. Now, in adolescence, many of the mental health disorders can be misdiagnosed as an emotional behavioral disorder. Schools tend to focus only on behavior, and that is their place. They do not diagnose. Neither should you diagnose mental health conditions, but you should be aware of these so that you can refer students to the proper place if that is the case. Because again, the third leading cause of death is suicide among adolescents. This is one of the reasons why it is so important um, that we address this. Miss uh, a mental health disorder can also be misdiagnosed as a learning disability. When you are experiencing anxiety or fear, this affects your cognitive functioning. Blood is shunted away from the brain for survival. It affects short-term memory, long-term memory, and your ability to critically think or think at higher levels. This is also a reason why students living in a stressful condition, oftentimes this occurs in low SES, high crime rates, they are just concerned for survival, they're in a stress mode, why they have a harder time learning. Depression. And again, this is a uh, one of the common comorbid or comorbidity, common occurring uh, 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 conditions, has a chemical condition in the brain. It's not situationally dependent. However, situations can exacerbate a pre-existing condition. Now, uh, depression and anxiety have this double connection in the brain, and this is how it works. When you when something happens, you tend to feel bad or feel badly. With this condition, this chemical condition, it sometimes makes you feel bad and badly, and you, this is connected to memories real or created. So with this condition, this chemical condition sometimes causes you to think or remember things real or not that are not very pleasant, which in terms makes you feel bad again. So this is this two-way flow, if that makes any sense at all. And as I said, substance use disorder or alcohol or abuse used to self-medicate. Now, for me, this was a fancy way of saying I used to like to get drunk a lot, and that takes the edge off. Don't drink anymore, but I used to, and I was not even aware that I was doing this. And this occurs with many students who have an anxiety or depressive disorder. All right, end part two.